black walnut or whatever wood you want to use in this case, it'll be black walnut for these ones. One last thing to think about before you go to cutting these out. If you notice on this side, everything's flat and uniform, but if you flip this board over, this was one of the first boards that was cut off this log when they milled it. So you can see that the contour of the tree is there and you're losing some of these spots. And if you're not careful with your layout, you can end up cutting this out and being real disappointed because it, the boards won't be what you want because you've lost in some areas. Really, the only reason I drill these relief holes in these tight turns is to try to prevent the saw from binding up as bad. Jigsaws have small blades for the most part, but on these tight turns, it's inevitable they're going to bind up and jump on you, and that's when you're going to get mistakes. So if it helps you, give it a shot. They don't have to be perfect right on the line. They just got to be close. The cleaner you do it now, the easier it'll be to finish. These are wood rasp and they're great when you got to get a lot of material out of a tight spot. You can see they're super aggressive. They're just a file designed for wood. They're not a steel file. Steel files will just clog up if you try to use them on wood so I wouldn't suggest it. But they work great for getting in the tight spots to get all your chatter marks, any saw blade marks left or any Im imperfect cuts you made. These work great to work those out like that one right there. That would take quite a while to sand out. These wood rasps will take it out in a heartbeat. Just another tool to have around the shop. They're pretty cheap and they work great for this project. All the way through 80, 150, 180, 220, and the 320. All of them. I got plenty to do. Yes, I'm fully aware how ratchet this setup is. This is not ideal. This is not the way these tools are designed to be used, but it works for me. Again, this is just a hobby. My shop's small. I don't have the perfect heater for a wood shop, so I've got to try to be aware of what I'm doing with the dust and collect as much of it as I can.
when you're done for the night, don't forget to clean the shop. This is a part of the sanding process that I haven't really talked about yet. It's called water popping or popping the grain. I do this between 150 and 220, and then again between 220 and 320. All you do is you get a squirt bottle with some water and a rag, mist them down real good, kind of wipe them dry. They're, gonna, they're still gonna be damp, but you let them air dry for a couple hours or overnight, ideally. But as soon as they're dry to the touch, they're, they're pretty much good to go. But the point of it is, is it pops all the little fibers and grains up and the sanding scratches, they kind of get packed down. 